welcome back to my channel because I'm crafty my name is Caitlin and the last few weeks I was actually sick I got a cold and I haven't been filming so today I'm gonna film a couple videos um, and you'll see them over the next couple weeks but for right now I'm gonna show you guys a little tour of my domestic machines um, just kind of give a little bit of background on why I have all these machines um, what I use them for a little bit of their features um, if there's anything I miss in this video that you'd really like me to talk about about, um, let me know down in the comments maybe I can make another video or show something on Instagram or just answer down in the comments um, I do have quite a few machines here and I do use them for a lot of different things um, some of them I prefer over the other um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about that um, there's a few videos I've made in the past um, specifically for this machine here this is the original machine that I started sewing with um, and that's what I'm going to start with today. Um, but if you want, you can check out those videos as well. Um, I will link them down below and I'll put them somewhere in the cards. Um, but yeah, so let's get started. So this machine here is a white brand um, and as far as I know white um, later in its life uh, was purchased by Husqvarna. Um, most people know I think Husqvarna today but I don't think white exists anymore. Um, but this machine was actually gifted to my mom from her sister so my aunt gave it to her and I'm not entirely sure if she ever used it. I don't remember what she said about it but all I remember was that it was in the basement in a box and apparently it had always been there <laughs> and I remember for such a long time always being into fashion and wanting to start sewing but I didn't know where to start and I had no idea that we even owned a sewing machine um, until high school when I started taking some classes uh, my mom mentioned hey I'm pretty sure there's a sewing machine in the basement and I was like what? <laughs> we have a sewing machine this whole time. Um, so yeah, that was this machine. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the date, but um, based on its kind of construction um, and probably when it was gifted to my mom, I'm going to say it's probably from the 70s or 80s, likely 80s. Um, but yeah, it's a great machine. Um, a lot of the pieces inside are metal and that's what I have come to learn over the years is much better. Um, there are beautiful fancy machines out there today that are digital, um, can connect to Wi-Fi and you can put, you know, USBs in it and load different um, patterns or embroideries or things like that. Um, and those machines are great. For me, I don't do too much of that. 
Um, and so I prefer a nice, heavy duty, old machine, older than me, <laughs> of course. Um, and they just seem to work so much better. Their parts inside are more durable. They last longer. Once you get kind of late 19, you know, 90s or later, um, a lot of the pieces inside are plastic. And over time that plastic becomes brittle and it kind of turns into the consistency of like dried pasta um, that you have at the grocery store. And then it just starts to break. So all those gears inside, they just start to grind down um, if the machine is in um, maintenance a lot. And just over time it will do that no matter what. Um, so that's why I like to look for an older kind of heavy duty machine. The cool thing that I've had in this in the past um, using older machines is sometimes I found that they actually work just as well, sometimes if not better, than an industrial straight stitch machine. So that's something I look for and highly recommend if you're somebody looking to get a sewing machine or you want to purchase one for your kid, your grandkid, or someone you know. Start with an older machine get it maintenance. It's likely that it still works. It just needs some little tweaking um, and it's likely a great machine. So this one has a lot of features. Um, it has straight stitch, um, different zigzag sizes. Um, uh, it's a four step buttonhole here. Um, there's a blind hem, um, a three step um, straight stitch zigzag, and then some kind of um, like repair stitches that you would use for like mending. Um, the funny thing about this machine, which I discovered, I think within the last year and I'm kicking myself that I never tried, but the zigzag stitch on here, there's one, two, three, four, there's five presets and each one gets a little bit bigger. What I, for the life of me, could not figure out with this machine is changing the, like width of the stitch and so this just changes the length so the length of that one stitch inside the zigzag but every time if I put it to something really big maybe I was like mending a pair of jeans putting on a patch or something um, the stitch would be so wide I couldn't get the zigzag closer together so what I've discovered with this machine is the length dial that's down here when you use the zigzag stitch acts as the width and so if I put it closer you know, to one or zero, um, and zero is used for the buttonhole stitch, so it's a nice close zigzag. I knew that the machine could do that. Um, I can do the same with the zigzag. I don't know, kind of weird um, because this only says length here, but maybe a little, uh, a little key indicator here with the buttonhole that you do have to use this for the um, the width of the zigzag. Um, so this dial is just a turn dial um, and same for the length here. So I've got zero to four and then my reverse stitch is a button here. So super simple, not much more than that. There's another guide for all the stitches here and we've got a light on and off. We've got our pedal. Um, and the other interesting thing about this machine is the bobbin winder. So for a while I couldn't get the bobbin winder to work. That was the only thing I found wrong with it upon pulling it out of the box for sitting in the basement for gosh knows how many years. Um, this was a little bit stuck. So the outer wheel is to actually make the machine turn a, a regular cycle, but there's an inner dial here and this, um, if I hold the outer dial and turn the inner dial, oh, I can't even do it today, it's getting tight again. Um, it gets locked into place a bit. So once this, gets, this inner dial gets loose, this will activate the bobbin winder and stop the needle from moving up and down as you wind the bobbin. So prior to getting this part fixed, um, when I had it maintenance by someone, I would just run the bobbin winder and the needle would be moving up and down, um, which isn't the worst case scenario. It's safe for your machine. It's okay to do. You can take out the needle, take out the bobbin casing so there's nothing actually interacting inside the machine while that happens. Um, but I knew there was a way to stop that, so we did figure it out. Um, but yeah, that works perfectly fine. We have two bobbin uh, or um, thread spool uh, holders here. 
and then my tensioner is at the front here. This also opens up, so maybe it's a bit bright with the light. There we go. Um, so we've got our take-up lever and all of our guides inside as well as the light that I can um, interchange. And there's a, a guide here for the, the pressure on the uh, presser foot. This little guy comes off the front and there's a little kind of container that swings out. It's detachable, not my favorite way um, for a machine. I don't really use these little containers to be honest. I have enough storage um, that I'm probably going to show you in another video I'll film today. Uh, so I don't really use these. I do however right now have um, some needles and a bobbin in here um, because this is a machine that I like to travel with. Um, sometimes if I go home and visit my parents um, and my mom has some mending or something to fix, this is the machine I often bring. So I will utilize that little container, um, but otherwise I don't really use it. And this machine also has a front-loading bobbin with a regular kind of casing. Um, I do have a video kind of all about bobbins and bob intention um, specifically with this machine so I will link that down below and then there's also a lever here to push the feed dogs up or feed dogs down um, I don't really use that ever I would say um, not a feature I use I always keep them up keep my fabric moving along and that's essentially it um, there weren't really any accessories that came with this machine. Um, it just kind of was as is, and that's it. It's pretty heavy. Um, I'll try and, I don't know if it's gonna kind of pick up on camera how heavy it is, but it's, it's hefty, it's hefty. Uh, I don't think there's any other features to really show you, but like I said in the beginning, definitely recommend a older machine if you're looking to start sewing, um, or maybe you have a machine that's not working, just get it maintenance. Um, I know maintenance, sewing maintenance is kind of few and far between these days. Uh, it's definitely a bit of a dying art. A lot of people aren't doing it as much as they used to. Um, but if you have an older machine, it's definitely work, worth fixing. Um, if you have a newer machine, maybe it's a very simple machine, doesn't have too many features and it's really not turning, um, it's probably a gear problem. Um, not always, but it's very likely that the gears are, are starting to disintegrate and at that point, it's just not really worth fixing. So get yourself an old, an old Bessie like this one, <laughs> oops, and uh, she'll be very reliable for you. All right, so this is my next machine that I purchased. This is a Kenmore. It is also a older machine. It is quite hefty and for the most part metal as well. Um, I sought out this machine after working with a Kenmore machine um, at one of my old jobs and I was really looking for that same model. It was a bit hard to find um, so the sewing mechanic that I knew um, I had him hunting down for an older Kenmore. I was like once you see one Take a picture, send it to me, and I'll let you know if I want it. So he came across this one. I was like, you know what? It works. Um, at the time, I, I wanted to have two sewing machines. Um, I was traveling a little bit, and I was kind of in between like moves. And so my, my previous machine, the white machine, was at my parents, and I didn't have one where I was currently living. So this was the real reason for purchasing this and my very good experience with the Kenmore machine that I had used, um, I really wanted a second machine. So this one came along. Again, like I said, this is a little bit different than the machine um, that I was originally looking for, but this has a lot of great features as well. So this machine is actually a top loading bobbin. Um, so it's got the little plate on top. Um, so the casing is inside the machine. I don't need to have that extra metal um, casing like I do for my other machine. The one that I had used um, that I was looking for originally would have had the same bobbin as my other machine, uh, but it was something I was willing to try. There's nothing wrong with this kind of bobbin. I just prefer the other type. 
but this takes the same kind of bobbin inside. It's just the way you load it and things are a little bit different. This one also has a lot more space, I find, like inside the kind of, I guess, like throat area of the machine. And the presser foot has a lot more space than my other one. Um, this one also has a little pocket um, container in the front. So I do have some of the bobbins that it came with and some of the other feet that came with this machine. This is for um, a blind hem, I think. Um, what else we got? We have a dial here, a lot more stitch options than my other machine. Um, these ones, I would say there's a lot more decorative stitches on here. Not likely that I'll use a lot of these, but the option is nice. Um, we have our width for our zigzag up top here. Um, I think this is for our feed dogs, if I remember correctly. Tension, and the side does open up, um, just like my other machine. I don't have it plugged in right now, but it does have um, a light um, inside, just like the other one, and pressure a pressure dial for the presser foot. Um, the other cool thing here is that it actually has a button for speed, high and low. Um, so if you're doing something super delicate and you need to like go at a slow pace, at least you can allow the machine to help you control that um, so you're not super reliant on your actual foot. Um, this is great for someone learning how to sew. Um, I, sometimes when I'm teaching somebody, I'm like, it's like driving a car. The harder you press, you know, the faster it's going to go, but sometimes people don't drive cars or they're too young and they haven't done that yet. Um, so this is a great option. Totally not necessary to have, but if you find a machine like that and you're starting out, it's kind of nice. Um, the on button is right beside it. We have our reverse stitch, it's just a little lever. And then there's an additional dial on the side here for me to change my stitch length. So the numbers on this one is a little bit different than my other machine but it's pretty clear um, and I don't know, it works pretty well, I like it. And then we have our big um, uh, flywheel dial uh, on the side, just like this. Um, it has a bobbin winder on top as well, this one works great. And I think that is it. Oh, this one also has a really cool feature, I forgot. There is an additional um, spool holder that I can move kind of to the back, to the side, wherever I need it to be. So if I have a really large bobbin that I'm working with, or a big spool of thread, so something much larger than your kind of traditional size, um, I can fit it here without it pulling. Um, sometimes when you work with those larger bobbins um, and you have it up here, it doesn't really fit and it puts more tension on the stitches than is supposed to be there. Um, so this kind of helps with that. So yeah, this is a great machine too. This one did, however, come with an accessory kit that my other machine does not have. Um, it's in the, as far as I know, the original Kenmore box. And this is a buttonhole attachment. I have not used this yet. And to be quite honest, I have no idea how to use it. But there is a ton of options. There's keyhole, regular regular one and regular two it looks like and they're all different measurements so you kind of have your choosing um, there's the needle plate that needs to be changed in order to use this and this guy goes on the side as well um, I think I have the manual for this I can't remember um, but I haven't really needed to use this yet uh, I'm sure the quality of buttonhole on this machine is a lot better than my other one um, my white machine does not do the best a buttonhole, but it works. Um, but I think I just haven't really needed to do a buttonhole in the last, I don't know, probably since I got this machine. Um, so I just haven't used it yet. I haven't sat down and kind of tried it out. But um, yeah, it works well. So if I just lift up and I press the little button at the back, they're just the feet that pop off and I can just pop them back on. So. For both machines, I can kind of interchange feet if I need to. Uh, I think the only one that doesn't work on here is I have like a zipper foot that screws on. It's not a pop-on foot. Um, and this one has a much higher um, take-up space than my other machine, so that one doesn't work. But any ones that clip on work perfectly fine. Okay, and the last machine I'm going to show you is this overlock for serger. 
Um, surgeries aren't necessary, I would say, but they definitely help. They make the inside of your garment more professional. Uh, it kind of seals those edges in, kind of like you would see if you purchased um, the clothing item at the store. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with the serger. For me, it's something I always used as I started sewing, and so I saw a huge value in having a serger. Um, I honestly don't really think I even sewed anything without, um, which was kind of just by chance that I was around people who had a serger and in sewing classes that sergers were available to me. Um, but this one is fairly new to me. I think I bought it last summer. Um, this one, uh, this is a good machine. So this is also a white. I hunted this down on Facebook Marketplace. I think I was looking on and off for one or two years, just kind of randomly. I'm like, oh yeah, I, I want to see if I can find that serger. And I finally found one. Um, I think I drove about an hour away, so I think I was, I think I was pretty lucky to find pretty much the exact machine I was looking for for not too much of a hassle. Um, but yeah, this machine I used at a previous job, and I just remember that pretty much anything I put through it, the machine took it and had a perfect stitch. It was very rare that I had to you know, fiddle with all the tensions and fix anything. It just worked all the time. <laughs> like maybe I broke a needle, but like it was good to go. So I knew this machine was reliable. I trusted my other white brand sewing machine. And so getting another white was something that was really important to me. So this machine was owned by one other person. Um, she gave me all the original documentation that she purchased with this machine and she had everything. She had the kits, the feet, extra needle plates, um, even her receipt from when she originally purchased it. Like she took very good care of this machine and she just didn't need it anymore. Um, so I was more than happy to take it off her hands and I was willing to pretty much pay <laughs> whatever it was because I really wanted this machine. Um, I don't think I paid that much for it to be honest, but it's a really great machine and I love it. So yeah, it has four um, thread options, so I can run it with three or I can run it with four. Um, it's just a traditional overlock serger. It doesn't do that fifth like chain stitch if you had a five thread. Um, I do have two needle options inside here. We've got our wheel on the side. Um, this little lever, I like to play with it. <laughs> um, it releases the tension off the thread. Uh, so if I need to re-thread the machine, I can push this down and allow um, those knots to come through really easily. Um, the bottom flips down. And what I really like about this machine, and this piece comes open as well, I can open up the front completely and see everything inside. I don't have to like nook and cranny get in there with tweezers. Um, I can feasibly thread this whole thing with just my fingers. Do tweezers help? Yes, but I've used some sergers in the past where everything is so compact inside that it is almost impossible to thread or it just takes forever. So yes, you can tie it off and pull it through, but sometimes the thread breaks and you, you know, you need to go back in and actually re-thread the machine from, you know, the base. And it's so frustrating when you're working on a project and you're fighting with an overlock, which I've done so many times. And so that was one thing I really loved about this machine is everything is here. It's easy to get to. Like I can get to that looper. There's nothing in the way. Super easy to clean um, because everything's kind of so spread out and open. I can get all the dust out. It definitely needs a clean now that I'm looking at it. <laughs> but it's, it's so cool. It's got the guide here. Just everything is in great, great condition. Um, the, even the blades are super easy to get to here. Sometimes the blades are hard to clean because um, they get all bunched up in there. But the way this full section like opens and everything, I just think it's a, honestly a genius way to have a serger designed. Um, it does have the light as well. But other than that, that's pretty much all of its features. I don't think it has anything else. Um, it did come with um, a kit. I think she had some feet for like a rolled hem. Um, 
and just other things. I haven't taken a look at any of those to be honest because I don't typically use that. I just use the regular um, four thread like overlock stitch. Um, I have had to play with the tensions quite a bit since I got it, um, but I think I've got it tuned just about there. Um, it's probably due for service as well. That would probably bring it um, to be working like at 100%, but I know that I can rely on this machine. It's gonna last me a long time. It's very heavy. We've got lots of metal pieces inside, which is great. And that's what I look for. So yeah, I think that's it. That's all I have to show you about my domestic sewing machines. Uh, let me know if you have any questions down in the comments down below and I'll be more than happy to answer them. There's so many things you can do with these machines and I think before getting an industrial machine, um, definitely take a look at getting an older domestic machine that has different stitch options. The ones that I would highly suggest looking for are zigzag, straight stitch of course, and your buttonhole. Your buttonhole is kind of a bonus bonus, but I think at minimum, if you have a straight stitch and zigzag on a regular machine, you are cooking with gold and an overlock is definitely a bonus, bonus, bonus. Um, there's so many things you can do to get away without having to use an overlock, um, but if you're really seriously getting into sewing and garment making and you want to have that ability, um, an overlock is definitely helpful. You can definitely start playing with different threads you can put in the back, stretch threads and things like that um, to get sewing with uh, stretch material, make it a little bit easier. But again, totally not necessary. You can live without a serger, uh, but it does make things a little bit easier and a little bit more professional. So yeah, highly recommend older machines. Get them maintenance often and clean them out. Those are probably my top three things when you're starting to get into machines and using them in order to maintain them all. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video um, and I will see you next time. Bye!